I'm president of the Oklahoma Education Association, and we're here today because we want to present a report card of Superintendent Janet Barisi's performance as in her role as the State Superintendent of Public Education. The State Superintendent plays a huge role in the success of public schools in Oklahoma, and since schools have received their report cards this week, we thought it only appropriate that we uh, reflect on our superintendent's performance in her own role. We asked the public to grade the state superintendent, and we asked them to use 16 questions, and they covered four areas. And those four areas were competency, funding, transparency, and overall performance. We had nearly 4,000 responses in an eight-day period. And we had responses from educators, from parents, from community members. Uh, the superintendent received a grade of F in all four areas which uh, resulted in her average grade being in half. Survey respondents indicated that the state superintendent has been incompetent in many areas, especially in the testing this spring and in the A through F grading system. Thousands of children in Oklahoma this spring were impacted by testing errors. Students were left exhausted, they were demoralized, they were incapable of giving their best effort, while the state superintendent failed to hold CTB McGraw-Hill appropriately accountable. Superintendent Barisi made excuses. She blamed school districts. And yet, in the end, McGraw-Hill had their contract renewed. They made millions of dollars in profit. And they paid a very minimal cash penalty to Oklahoma's children. It amounted to 56 cents per student. Six months later, the state superintendent derived the A through F scores from this faulty testing system. A fair assessment system should inform and guide instruction, and it should be supported with the resources necessary to improve the school. The A through F grades released Wednesday simply labeled students, labeled teachers, and labeled schools. The results have been released and re-released so many times that we have no confidence that they are accurate. All too often, Superintendent Barisi claims to be raising the bar or increasing rigor, when in fact, she is simply deeming more students or schools as failures. The end of the year biology instruction exam is a very good example. This spring, thousands of uh, students took the biology exam. It's a component to receive their high school diploma. A committee of expert practitioners was appointed to set the score for passing. But once the test results were in, Superintendent Barisi ignored the experts and decided to arbitrarily increase the passing score. That was after the test was taken. When she made the change, she wasn't raising the bar. She was simply increasing the number of students that were labeled as failures. Superintendent Barisi also received low marks in funding. While she touts reform after reform, these are hollow words without the necessary resources to implement them adequately. The state superintendent should be the biggest advocate for public education funding in the state, but she has done nothing to address overcrowded classrooms or our lack of technology Neither has she offered a reasonable means of support to give teachers a pay increase. Surveys, uh, our survey results have proved that Superintendent Barisi is not perceived as transparent. At the public board meeting this past week, the Board of Education awarded a multi-million dollar company uh, contract to a company that was called Company C because Barisi refused to openly name the company she was recommending. This kind of secrecy shows a willful neglect of transparency. Finally, our respondents gave Superintendent Barisi a grade of F for overall performance due to her lack of support of public schools, education employees, and a lack of inclusion of the education community. We do want to express our appreciation to the thousands of citizens who participated and engaged in this poll, uh, and I would welcome any questions from you now. Thank you. 